Hi there, I'm John McAdams, founder of the Big Game Hunting Blog. And in this video, I'm going to do a detailed analysis of the 22 Hornet and how it compares to other 22 caliber cartridges like the 22 Long Rifle, the 22 Magnum, and the 223 Remington. I think you'll agree with me that, at first glance anyway, it makes a lot more sense to use more modern cartridges like the 223 Remington or the 204 Ruger instead of the 22 Hornet for hunting small game and varmints. After all, those newer cartridges shoot heavier bullets at a higher velocity, which translates into more kinetic energy, flatter trajectories, and more downrange performance. However, even though the cartridge has been around for about a century, and even though it can't come anywhere close to the performance of those newer cartridges on paper, the 22 Hornet is still a very useful predator and varmint hunting cartridge. So in this episode, I'm going to show you what situations the 22 Hornet is best suited for and whether or not you should consider getting one. Now, before we get started, I'd really appreciate it if you would do two favors for me. First, please, if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click the red subscribe button below and that will make sure you don't miss out on any of my new videos about hunting gear reviews, cartridge comparisons, and more. Now next, click the link in the description below or go to huntingguns101.com to get a free ebook I have written on the best hunting calibers that will provide more detailed information on popular hunting cartridges and what they are best suited for. Okay, now that you've done those things, let's get started talking about the 22 Hornet. As usual, we'll start with the history of the cartridge. As is the case with many older centerfire rifle cartridges, the exact origins of the 22 Hornet are a little hazy. That being said, Grosvenor Watkins is generally credited for developing it using the black powder 22 Winchester centerfire cartridge for inspiration in the 1920s. Intrigued by the new cartridge, Townsend Whalen tested it out a few years later in a modified Springfield rifle. To put it mildly, Whalen was impressed with the performance of the 22 Hornet. First off, the early 22 Hornet load he tested of a 45 grain soft point bullet at about 2400 feet per second had no real peer at the time. Since it was the first small bore, high velocity cartridge designed for small game and varmint hunting, the 22 Hornet was truly an innovative development. Additionally, the cartridge had a very light recoil and a mild report that made it a true joy to shoot, especially when those early loads had such impressive performance for that time period. Now finally, the cartridge was also extremely accurate. Some accounts from that time period state that the 22 Hornet was the most accurate centerfire cartridge the technicians at Winchester had ever encountered up until that point. Considering that Whalen was known for his quote that, quote unquote, only accurate rifles are interesting, he must have found the 22 Hornet quite fascinating indeed. Now he was not the only person impressed with the cartridge and it quickly started to catch on with the hunting community. However, widespread adoption of the 22 Hornet was hampered initially by the fact that no company mass produced rifles for the cartridge during the first few years it existed. For that reason, shooters during the early days of the 22 Hornet primarily use customized rifles like the bolt-action Springfield Model 1922 or the single-shot Martini Cadet. Now, since most of those rifles were converted from the Rimfire 22 long rifle cartridge, they had a 223-inch groove diameter, and we'll talk more about this in a minute. However, after Winchester Model 54 rifles chambered in 22 Hornet went into large-scale production in 1933, the cartridge really made it into mainstream use. Other companies soon began producing bolt action and single shot rifles for the cartridge to keep up with exploding demand. Indeed, the 22 Hornet was the third most produced caliber behind only the 30 6 and the 270 in pre World War II Winchester Model 70s, which should give you an idea how popular the cartridge was with American hunters in the 1930s and early 1940s. Now the 22 Hornet was also widely adopted in Europe where it is known as the 5.6 by 35 millimeter. Now in addition to bolt action and single shot rifles, 
European gun makers have produced a number of combination guns chambered in the cartridge as well. Now, after World War II, the 22 Hornet started to decline in popularity for a couple of different reasons. For one thing, the major U.S. gun manufacturers started producing the rifle with a .224 inch diameter groove in line with the other centerfire 22 caliber cartridges in production. Now, obviously, changing the bore diameter of a cartridge already in mass production can present some challenges. Now, the introduction of the high velocity 222 and 223 Remington cartridges in the 1950s and the 1960s also stole some of the varmint hunting market share away from the 22 Hornet. Through all of that, the 22 Hornet has refused to die and it is still hanging around to this day as a relatively popular varmint cartridge. Now, even though it doesn't compare favorably on paper to many more modern cartridges, there's no denying that the 22 Hornet has quite the appeal to varmint hunters looking for an accurate cartridge with a tame recoil and a mild report. Now, one of the reasons why the cartridge became so popular was because it was so darn effective on small game environments like foxes, bobcats, and coyotes at short to moderate range. Now, when it was first designed, scopes were nowhere near as common as they are now. So the vast majority of hunters using the 22 Hornet in those early years were shooting with iron sights. Now with a maximum effective range of around 200 yards, the cartridge allowed hunters to hit small targets about as far as was realistically possible for most people with iron sights. Now, since it had a very flat trajectory and a well-deserved reputation for accuracy, the 22 Hornet performed marvelously in that role and also had the added bonus of keeping recoil and muzzle blast to an absolute minimum. There is no telling how many coyotes, foxes, and bobcats hunters have taken with the 22 Hornet over the years. Like I keep saying, the 22 Hornet is still great for varmints and small game out to 200 yards and the light report of the cartridge also makes it easier on the ears than louder cartridges like the 220 Swift or the 223 Remington. Now lighter and slower 22 Hornet bullets are also less likely to ricochet. Now these characteristics make the 22 Hornet a better choice for pest control in populated areas than those other cartridges. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about the ballistics of the 22 Hornet and how it compares to some other cartridges. In terms of performance, the 22 Hornet is significantly more powerful than rimfires like the 17 HMR, the 22 Long Rifle, and the 22 Winchester Magnum rimfire, or the 22 Magnum. But it is clearly in a tier below other 22 caliber centerfires like the 223 Remington. Now this is pretty clear when you compare Federal's 36 grain copper plated hollow point 22 long rifle, CCI 40 grain game point 22 Magnum, Hornady 36 grain VMAX 22 Hornet, and Winchester 55 grain Varmint X 223 Remington ammunition. Now yes, the 223 Remington is clearly a more powerful cartridge than the 22 Hornet. The 223 Remington has more energy remaining at 200 yards than many 22 Hornet loads have at the muzzle. However, the body of evidence also indicates that both cartridges are very effective on predators, small game, and varmints. So the biggest advantage the 223 Remington has lies in its higher velocity and flatter trajectory that make it easier to hit targets at longer range and also just more effective on that game at longer range when you hit it. But that does come at a cost of more noise, muzzle blast, and more recoil. That's not to say the 223 Remington recoils a lot because it doesn't. However, there is still a noticeable difference in what it is like to shoot those two cartridges. Here's a personal example for you. Over the years, I have taken many new hunters and shooters to the range and let them shoot several of my rifles in sequence. I always enjoy having them shoot a 22 long rifle, then my 22 Hornet, and then moving them immediately over to an AR and 5.56. I always get a really good reaction with the 22 Hornet that's along the lines of, wow, that's really fun to shoot. It is still a centerfire rifle cartridge, and it's still loud enough to damage your ears if you're not wearing ear protection, but it's not nearly as loud as my AR is, and it's still really fun to shoot, and is a really big step up in performance over the 22 rimfires. All right, now let's talk about 22 Hornet rifles and ammo. 
Now, while the 22 Hornet is not as popular as it used to be, it's still not difficult to find factory loaded 22 Hornet ammo at gun stores all over the world. Once again, at least in normal times, though. For instance, Federal, Hornady, Nosler, Remington, Seller and Balot, and Winchester all manufacture at least one 22 Hornet load. Now, most of the older 22 Hornet rifles, like the Winchester Model 54 and Model 70, have a relatively slow rifling twist rate of 1 in 16 inches. That means the bullet makes one full revolution every 16 inches as it travels down the barrel. For comparison, it's not uncommon to see 1 in 9 inch, 1 in 8 inch, or even 1 in 7 inch rifling in an AR-15 or newer production rifles in cartridges like 223 Remington. Now, newer 22 Hornet rifles, like the Ruger 7722, have a 1 in 14 inch twist rate, which is a little bit faster than that 1 in 16 inch twist rate of the older 22 Hornet rifles. Now, since they have a slower rifling twist, those older rifles have trouble stabilizing bullets heavier than 45 grains in many cases. For that reason, 45 grain bullets are the most common and 35 grain bullets are a close second in popularity with 22 Hornet ammo. If you want to use heavier 50 grain and 55 grain bullets, you'll probably need to hand load and depending on your rifle, it may or may not work real well for you. Due to advances in propellants, modern factory loaded 22 Hornet ammo has slightly improved ballistics compared to the original loads from the 1920s and 1930s. Exact performance varies depending on barrel length, but for instance, Hornady advertises a muzzle velocity of 3100 feet per second for their 35 grain Varmint Express ammunition and 2665 feet per second for their 45 grain interlock ammo. Now compare that to a 45 grain soft point at about 2400 feet per second as one of those initial loads for the 22 Hornet. Now current production rifles in 22 Hornet include the Ruger 7722, the Savage 25, and the CZ 527. Lots of rifles have been manufactured in the cartridge over the years though, and it's definitely possible to find some of those older rifles as well. This includes things like the single shot Ruger No. 1, the Winchester Model 43, Model 54, and the Model 70, the Browning Model 1885, the Browning A-Bolt Micro Hunter, and the Blosser K95. Now, as an interesting aside, the U.S. military also issued a couple different 22 Hornet rifles as survival gear during the 1940s through the 1970s. These rifles were intended to assist the downed crew of an aircraft in hunting for food, but not really for self-defense against enemy troops. Now, the M4 survival rifle was a pretty basic bolt-action rifle chambered in the cartridge used by the Air Force in the 1940s. It was eventually replaced by the M6 air crew survival weapon, which was a double-barreled combination gun chambered in 410 bore and either 22 long rifle or 22 Hornet. Springfield Armory sold a replica of the M6 for several years that was known commercially as the Springfield Armory M6 Scout, and there are still a few of those guns floating around out there as well. Okay, so with all that said, what is the 22 Hornet best suited for? So first, using the cartridge for deer hunting is a somewhat controversial subject. For one thing, it's not legal in some states. However, assuming it is legal to use on deer where you live, I still tend to agree with Mel Tappan's assessment of the 22 Hornet for deer hunting in his book, Survival Guns, on page 90 and 91. And I'm quoting from the book now, it is by no means a reliable deer cartridge, even with hand loads, although it has been used for that purpose. Okay, this is me again. So, is it possible to kill a deer with a 22 Hornet? Absolutely. In fact, my grandfather killed his first deer with a bolt action 22 Hornet many years ago. Now, unfortunately, his experience pretty well sums up the two scenarios most likely to play out if you shoot a big game animal with that little cartridge. So he was deer hunting in Louisiana and encountered a small buck. And he initially shot that buck in the shoulder and caused a nasty, but probably not immediately fatal wound. The deer ran a short distance, stopped, turned and looked at him for a few seconds. Now, fortunately, he had time to reload and shoot the deer again. This time, he shot it in the head and the deer dropped in its tracks. Now, my grandfather told me that he always regretted shooting the deer with that cartridge. 
Now, while he kept that rifle and ended up killing probably hundreds of coyotes and other varmints with it over the course of the rest of his life, he never took it deer hunting again. Now, he learned the hard way that those small, lightly constructed bullets quite often won't penetrate far enough to reach the vitals on a body shot of a deer. And this was not even that big of a deer down in the South Louisiana swamps. However, they will really do a number on a deer, a feral hog, or other big game animal if you hit them in the neck or the head. Only take that shot if you really know what you're doing, though, because it is really easy to screw up. Now, while I don't like the cartridge for deer hunting, the 22 Hornet is an awesome predator or varmint cartridge. So first off, it's a really nice option if you just want something to use around your homestead or your farm to keep the varmints out of your hen house or your garden. Like always, you still need to be really careful about what uh, lies behind your target because while it's not as likely to ricochet or go as far as many other cartridges, the 22 Hornet is not immune from that either. Now, in addition to varmints, the 22 Hornet is darn effective on coyotes, bobcats, etc. Additionally, my dad also took one to Africa many years ago and shot a jackal with it, which is similar in size to a coyote, and it performed great. Now, the 22 Hornet is not a super high-velocity cartridge, so it doesn't have as long of an effective range as other popular varmint cartridges like the 204 Ruger, 223 Remington, 22 250, or the 243. However, it works really, really well on predators at short range, like inside 200 yards. Now, the 22 Hornet is also not super rough on fur either, so it's a great choice for those who that's an important consideration for. On the other hand, compared to bigger and more powerful cartridges, there is a greater chance of wounded and lost animals when using the 22 Hornet, though. Though this is not as big of an issue with the 22 Hornet as it is with smaller cartridges, but it is something to keep in mind for some hunters, and especially if you're going to be doing something like uh, participating in a coyote hunting contest. Now, if you do a lot of long-range varmint hunting, or you just really like high-velocity cartridges, then you should probably look into getting a 22-250 Remington or a 220 Swift, because the 22 Hornet probably isn't for you. On the other hand, if you do most of your varmint hunting inside 200 yards and you want a sweet shooting cartridge with minimal recoil and minimal muzzle blast, then the 22 Hornet is tough to beat. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any of my new videos on hunting gear reviews, cartridge comparisons, and more. Now, for more detailed information on popular hunting cartridges, and what they are best suited for, click the link in the description below or go to huntingguns101.com to get a free ebook I have written on the best hunting calibers. Now I'm going to turn it over to you. What do you think of the 22 Hornet? Do you think it's an appropriate cartridge for your needs? What game have you successfully taken with it if you already own one? Let me know by leaving a comment on this video right now. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and good hunting.